Welcome to your maths lesson for Friday the 5th of February. Today we are going to be learning all about equivalent fractions and this is going to be the first of four lessons on equivalent fractions. Um, so don't worry too much today if you still feel like you need some more work on it because we will definitely be doing that. So let's warm up. OK, so could you pause the video here, please, and have a go at these warm up questions They're all about solving number um, and practical problems? So off you go. OK, so let's come back together and go through some of the answers, which I will show here. Actually, if I just go back here a second, because the questions are on a different page. Let's put them over here so that we can see them on the side there. So the first question was, there are six eggs in every box. I need 45 eggs. How many boxes shall I buy? And if you remember when we did our dividing lessons, we talked about um, not getting caught out by these kind of questions. So the sum that I did was six uh, 45 divided by 6 and I do use the bus stop method here but you could have used sharing it out into um, a grid that would have been fine as well uh, so I said how many sixes in four zero so I move that four over there how many sixes in 45 there was seven remainder three so the question was how many boxes shall I buy so I need to buy eight boxes because um Otherwise, I'm going to have three eggs missing, aren't I? If I only buy seven boxes, I'm still going to need another three eggs. So I need to buy eight boxes. Um, and then for the second one, I need 33 pens for my class. Pens come in packs of seven. How many packs will I need to buy? Um, and the same thing again. My, my pens, I did seven divided by 33. And my answer was four remainder five. But the answer to the question is five packs of pencils, because if I only buy four packs of pencils, there's going to be five children in my class without a pencil. So I need to buy five packs, even though there'll be some spares. And then for the last question, um, there are nine oranges in every bag. I need 60 altogether. Um, how many bags will I need to buy? So again, I did the sum 60 divided by nine. I've got my answer is six. Um, but a remainder six. So if I only buy six bags of oranges, I'm going to be six short. So if I was buying oranges for um, Sycamore class and for Beach class, I wanted 60 because there's 60 children altogether. If I only bought seven bags of orange, uh, sorry, six bags of oranges, then there'd be six children without an orange. So I'd need to buy seven bags and I'd have a few leftovers. OK, so those are the answers to the questions here. Eight boxes, five packs of pencils, seven bags of oranges. Moving on to today's lesson. Um, so today we're learning all about equivalent fractions and what equivalent means is the same. OK, so it means it's equal to or the same as. I'm just going to put myself out of the way. Um, and to find equivalent fractions, I've shown you in the steps to success over here, do the same to the top as you do to the bottom. That's our little rule, which will become very familiar to you as we go through the next um, few days worth of lessons. So the question here, can a fraction have more than one equivalent fraction? We will look at in a moment. But first of all, I want us to have a look at these two fractions here together. So the first fraction I've got is one quarter. OK, so there's four is a denominator because there are four equal pieces. And I've got one of those four. So that's the bits that's coloured in green there. OK, and then maybe we'll think of this as pizza. So it's quite a big slice of pizza there, isn't it? Then on this one, it's the same size pizza, but it's cut into eight slices here. OK, and this time I've got two slices. But you can see that each of those slices are smaller, aren't they? than this slice. So actually, when we put my two smaller pieces together, it makes the same size piece as over here, okay? So one quarter 
would be the same as two eighths because I've chopped it into more pieces. Those pieces are smaller. I'm sharing it between more people or whatever. OK, so those fractions are the same. And I just want you to use this um, little section of a fraction wall up here. And I want you to have a little think about if you think that a fraction can have even more than one equivalent fraction. So these are equivalent fractions because they're both equal to each other. They both equal the same amount. Do you think that there are any others that could equal the same amount as those? So just pause and have a little think about that. OK, um, and the answer to that question is in, in simply is yes, there you can have more than one equivalent fraction. You can have lots and lots and lots of equivalent fractions. And I will show you how to find equivalent fractions in lots of different ways over the next few lessons. OK, I'm not going to worry about what other equivalent fractions are for now. I'm just wanting you to understand that there, these aren't the only two that are equivalent. OK, um, so I could cut this pizza into even more slices. Um, and give you even more pieces and it would still be the same amount of pizza that I was giving you just in a different size slice. OK, so there are lots of different equivalent fractions. So I'd like you to pause the video here for a moment and I'd just like you to have a little think about um, how you could explain how the diagram shows both two thirds and four sixths. So have a little think about how do you think that diagram is showing two thirds and how do you think it's showing four sixths? I think the four sixths one is a bit easier, but how could that diagram be showing two thirds? So just pause here and we'll come back together in a minute and have a chat about it. OK, so. You can probably see from on the four sixths one, the denominator is six and this um, frame is divided into six equal pieces and then four of them are coloured in yellow. So that's the four sixths, nice and easy, isn't it? If we're thinking about it showing two thirds, which is an equivalent fraction, is the same, it means the same amount. All that simply means is that this shape has been cut into bigger pieces. It's only been cut into three pieces. So we've got this piece here, that's one piece, two pieces, and three pieces here, okay? So if we ignore that line going across the middle, there's one slice there, one slice there, and one slice there. And two of them are coloured in, aren't they? Two of those rows are coloured in. So two out of our three rows are coloured in. So that shows you that those fractions are equivalent. And you might start to spot some patterns between fractions that are equivalent, but we'll come back to that in a minute. So. This is just going to reiterate what I said. The diagram is divided in six equal parts and four out of the six are yellow. You can also see three columns and two of the columns are yellow. OK, so let's move on. I'd just like to have a little think here about which one of these is the odd one out. OK, so have a little look, see if you can figure out what the answer is. Pause here. OK, this was a bit of a tricky one. Let's have a little look. If we look at our answer, then this is the odd one out, OK? Because all the other fractions are equivalent to half. These fractions all show half. So if we count here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 pieces. And this is 10 on the bottom. And five of them are coloured, whoops, in. OK, so five out of ten pieces are coloured in there. I'll try typing, it might be a bit quicker. This one, there are two pieces and one of them is coloured in. And then on this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve pieces. So there are twelve pieces altogether, so that's our denominator. And six of them are coloured in. One, two, three, four, five, six. OK, and you can see here that six is half of twelve, isn't it? 
because that six are coloured in out of the 12. One is half of two and five is half of ten. Then when we look at this one, we've got one, two, three, four, five pieces. And we've got three of them that are coloured in. And so three isn't half of five, is it? So that one is not um, is not equivalent to half. OK, so all of these are all, all mean half. Obviously, if you had 10 sweets and you ate five of them, you'd have eaten half of them. If you had 12 sweets and you ate six of them, you would have eaten half of them. And if you had two sweets and you ate one, you would have eaten half of them. Um, but these, this one, three out of five isn't half. OK, so that's the odd one out. So well done if you spotted that, because that was a tricky one. Right, moving on to here, I'd just like you to pause the video again. And I'd like you to write down what all of these fractions are. Um, are underneath. OK, so underneath each one, obviously you can write actually on the screen. I understand that. So just write them into their pairs. OK, so write those two and then write these two fractions and then these two and then these two. OK, just one underneath the other if you set it out like that and then it'll make it easier when we come back together in a second. OK, so just write down what the fractions, what fractions is are coloured in each of these cases for me. OK. OK, so we're just going to have a little look together. Um, so here there were four pieces, one was coloured in. Here there were eight pieces and two were coloured in. Here we've got four pieces again and we've got three of them coloured in. Here we have got eight pieces. There are six of them coloured. Here we have two pieces with one coloured in, so we've got one half as our fraction. Here we've got eight again, four pieces coloured in. I'll put them in the right place in a second. And here we've got six pieces and four of them coloured in. And here we've got three pieces and two of them coloured in. Now, there's something really funky about equivalent fractions. And it's one of those times when learning your times tables will, and knowing your times tables will really help you um, because you can notice a pattern between these pairs of equivalent fractions. Just have a little look at them. You might have already worked out what that relationship is yourself when you're writing down, them down yourself. But I'm just going to point something out to you that will help. OK, so without even needing to use the picture, we can see that they're equivalent because the same amount is coloured in on the picture. But if we have a look at this one, for example, four, double four is eight. And double one is two. OK, so we can see that the, both of the numbers have been doubled. Now, this is where my steps to success come in. Whatever happens to the top number, the same has to happen to the bottom number, OK? So you can't double the bottom number and times the top one by three or something. That's cheating, OK? But so if you times the top number by three, you have to times the bottom number by three, OK? So that's how you can find equivalent fractions. You do the same, multiply or divide them by the same number, top and bottom. So here, for example, um, three times two is six and four times two is eight, OK? Um, and then this one, how do we get from one to four? What times one is four? Well, one times four is four, and two times four is eight. So can you see we've done the same to the top as we did to the bottom? And here we go again. This one can be divided. Four divided by two is two, or two times two is four. And three times two is six, or six divided by two is three, OK? So you can see in each of those examples, the same thing has happened to the top number and the bottom number. And if we wanted to find other equivalent fractions, we could multiply them or divide them by other numbers, as long as we did it by the same number, top and bottom, and that would give us some more equivalent fractions, OK? So don't let your head explode with all that information. Just want you to just start to think about those patterns, the same happening to the top, as happens to the bottom, OK? And that means that the fractions are worth the same amount. OK, so let's move on to this one. I'd just like you to do the same thing again as we did on the last page. Um, so write the fractions of the numbers. And then I just want you to 
work out and have a look if you can see what have both the numbers been multiplied by to get to the other number? OK, so if we do the first one together on this one, there's six on the bottom and three of them are coloured in. And here there's two on the bottom, so there's two pieces and one of them have been coloured in. So I'm going to write those two fractions in my book. I'm not going to draw the circle. And then I'm just going to look at them together and think, right, OK, how would you get, I like to multiply because I think dividing is harder to spot the multiplying. I like to use my times tables. So I think, hmm, how many twos make six? Two times what makes six? So then I count in my head, two, four, six. So two times three makes six. So I'm just going to write times three there. So if two times three makes six, I also need to do the same up here. 1 times 3 makes 3. So that makes a pattern, doesn't it? And I always like to, when we're in school, I draw nice little lines between them like that to remind me. But you don't have to do that if you don't want to. OK, so right, pause the video here, write down the fraction of the other and just see, can you work out what it has been multiplied by each time to get to the other fraction? OK, pause here. OK, so here we go again then. We've got two equal pieces, one of them coloured in, and we've got four equal pieces and two of them coloured in. OK, so hopefully you wrote those fractions down. And then we have to think, I sometimes find it easier to do the ones that aren't, haven't got ones in them because they get quite confusing, don't they, in our multiplication tables when we do one times things. So I like to work the bottom numbers, um, but it's up to you. So I was think, how many twos how two times what makes four? Well, I know that two times two makes four. So if two times two makes four, then if my theory is correct, one times two should also make two. And yes, it does. So that one is a times two. OK, then the next one down, we've got six pieces on the bottom and two on the top and three pieces on the bottom and one on the top. And once again, I'm going to look at those together, those numbers. I'm going to start with the lower number because I find it easier to multiply than to divide. Three times what makes six? Three times two makes six. So if three times two makes six, not there, then it should also be true that one times two makes two, which it does. OK, so we've got one times two makes two. Three times two is six. And then on this last one, I've got eight pieces there. So eight on the bottom. And I've got three of them coloured in. And then I've got one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen pieces was very tricky to count. I might have been able to guess that one, but I thought I'd better check just to make sure. So it's eighteen pieces. Oh, sorry, sixteen pieces and six coloured in. So eight times what? makes 16 or three times what makes six. So eight times two makes 16. As does oh, eight times two makes 16. Come on, move up little numbers. And three times two makes six. OK, so that's the little the patterns that I'm working with those. So you can see in each case, you do the same to the number at the top as you do to the bottom. If I left one of those numbers out, you could actually work out those, work out the missing numbers using that method. But the important thing to remember, always do the same to the top as you do to the bottom. Okay, so your tasks for today, Silver, this is your task. You have to write the fractions, just write the fractions in 
And then I'd like you to try really hard to try and work out what we need to times by to get from one number to the other, OK? Um, you might find that you don't even have to count the shapes if you can do that. So for the first one, for example, you'd put a two in there because there's two pieces of colour in. And then we need to look at those two fractions together and we need to think, right, two times what makes four? And I know that it's times two. So just anywhere on there, I'm just going to write times two in that box or next to it. You won't, you're not drawing the shapes out. So just draw your fractions out like that. Half equals two quarters and then just put a times two somewhere near it so that we can see that we have to times by two. So one times two is two and two times two is four. OK, and then so on and so forth for all of the rest. So you can pause here and have a go at silver. OK, and if your brain's not too frazzled after that, um, gold. I've got a similar thing to do here as well. So you can use the pictures to help you. You might be able to work out um, what those numbers are when, when you've worked out one of those numbers. You might be able to work out the other one um, just using our pattern. But I'd like you to do the same thing. So don't need to draw the pictures again. Write the equivalent fractions and then next to each one, write what we need to multiply by. So we'll do this one together again. So one out of four pieces here are coloured in. So we'll put a four there and then two out of eight pieces are coloured in there. So I'd write one quarter equals two eighths. And then just as an extra little thing, I want you to try and work out four times what is eight? It's times two. So four times two is eight. So I'm just going to pop a times two there to say I know that that one's times in by two. OK, and you'll recognise these really quickly if you know times tables really well. OK, so you can pause here and have a go at those. And then moving on to platinum, Teddy makes his fraction. Mo says he can make an equivalent fraction with a denominator of nine. Dora disagrees. She says it can't have a denominator of nine because the denominator would need to be double three. Who is correct and who is incorrect and explain why? So do we always have to times by two? That's what Dora seems to think we need to do. Mo says he can have a denominator of nine. So you need to decide who is correct, who's incorrect and explain why. And if you pause it here and have a go at that, and then I'll just move this out the way, the um, answer thing out the way in a bit so you can see. But please have a go first before you look at the answer. OK, so I'll just take the answer away there. So in actual fact, Mo is correct. He could make three ninths, which is equivalent to one third. Dora is incorrect. She has the misconception that you can only double to find equivalent fractions. And actually, um, he could times it by three, couldn't he? If he wanted to, he could do three times three would give him nine on the bottom. And then he could times the top number by three as well. So if we write that out together, um, so this fraction here is one third. Draw that there. And then if we wanted to do an equivalent fraction with nine on the bottom, as Mo suggested, all we need to do is think, right, okay, three times what makes nine? And as long as something times three makes nine, then that's fine. So we can say three times three is nine, isn't it? So then we have to do the same to the top. So one times three is three. So that would be Mo's equivalent fraction. So he is correct. And Dora's just a little bit confused because she, what she's saying, she thinks you always just have to times by two here, but that's not true. You can times by, by any number. OK, so hopefully um, that makes a bit of sense. And don't panic too much if it's all a, a bit um, muddled because it is quite a lot to take in in one lesson. And as I said, we're going to go back over it a few more times. OK, that's the end of your maths for today. Have a lovely weekend because it's Friday. Um, and I will see you um, fresh and bright on Monday morning. OK, bye bye.